Wow, this, this is incredible. Welcome back to California, my friends, and specifically welcome back to gold country. We are in a very little known area of gold country. Not too many people come up here. In fact, when I've talked about this area, to locals who live in nearby towns. They're like, huh, what are you talking about? But this is one of the most beautiful places I've ever been. The old historic ghost town. Of Humbug, California. Or at least that was its name until they changed it to the much better sounding North Bloomfield. Check out this old smithy. No blacksmith working on horseshoes today. This ghost town is all contained within the Malakoff Diggins California State Historic Park. Dude, this is one of the coolest places ever. I came up here mostly for just research. We were just going to look and not film at all because I want to come back and do a very detailed look. Lots of history here. But there's no way I could look at something like this and not at least share a little bit with you guys. But during the California gold rush and the whole mining boom in the west, there were lots of different kinds of mining. You had the old panning for gold, placer mining, hard rock mining, you know, tunneling into mountains. And then you had towns like Humbug, which became North Bloomfield. These were hydraulic mining towns. And I'll tell you about that in just a second. But first, Look inside the McKillican and Mobley General Store. This is a real old Western General Store from the 1870s. Of course, the door is closed. We can't go inside. But we can peek through the windows at all that awesome stuff. And look, through this window, you can see the inside of what was then the old post office. Look at all this stuff left in here. I wonder if it's been here the whole time. Certainly this bag has been here long enough. Look at how the bolts just rusted right out of there. Dude, I love coming to places like this. Check out the old drugstore and Masonic Lodge upstairs. I love how they're all peekings. You can look through the windows and see some of the old supplies. We had to go miles and miles and miles down a dirt road here. I was kind of sketched out and worried that we were going the wrong way. But eventually we made it to the diggings. Now in the last episode you saw we were in Virginia City, Nevada, a much later town, a silver boom town. That town, like a lot of other old mining towns, had burned down a few times, so all that's left now is brick buildings. But the early versions of most mining camps were like this. All quickly assembled wooden buildings, usually one story, maybe two. Thrown up to serve as a community as long as the gold was there. And quickly and easily abandoned once it ran out. Okay, look at this thing. Do you know what this is? This is like a spray nozzle for the end of your garden hose. Just for a much larger amount of water. They would channel rivers and streams or sometimes create lakes with giant flumes to funnel the water into massive pipes and into nozzles like this and literally blast away the sides of whole mountains. That's why hydraulic mining because of the water. It's like putting your finger over you know, your thumb over the end of a garden hose and spraying away some dirt just on a much more massive scale and on the way out of here you'll actually see what's left. The destruction that these things cause. The runoff literally clogged up so many streams and rivers in California. That's the reason we don't have a lot of rivers that you could take river boats up and stuff. It caused horrible flooding in the Central Valley of California. Still does actually. California now is known for being very environmentally conscious, maybe maybe overly so at times. But that certainly wasn't the case back during the gold rush. Dude, look at these buildings. Clearly some of them like this have been and are still being very lovingly restored. It's just mind blowing because when you come up here, this is really the middle of nowhere. Dude, look at this. Look at the size of this big Bertha. The museum is in this building. But of course, right now, it is closed. Luckily, the park itself is open, so you can still go inside to pay the entrance fee, but the pandemic means no exhibits for us. That's a beautiful building. I believe that used to be a big town hall or dance hall. And then next door, you've got this huge livery stable. No horses in there today. It looks like mostly just bees at the moment. This is awesome. I can't do too much filming because they told me you do need to buy a film permit. Which you have to get in advance. That's why there's no fuzzy microphone on here. So sorry if there's any wind noise. Look at this. Here's the R.D. Skidmore house. Apparently Rush Skidmore owned a saloon that's over there. Just the foundation is left. I'll show you in a little bit. But that is so wild. This is a lot nicer than my apartment. Imagine building a place like this. And then the gold runs out and you're like, well, just gotta leave it. Ooh, it's very warm out here. You look appropriately dressed. That looks nice. I love history, especially old western history. And you can't get much more western than the gold fields of California. I love all these houses. There's so many of them left here, all in a row with their pretty 
white fences and flowers are still growing out here. This is why I'd love to own a ghost town, have a bunch of like-minded, history-loving people own the other houses with me. We could just have a little community out here. Ooh, this one looks just a little bit haunted. I feel like we're walking around inside of Anne of Green Gables or something like that, especially when you're dressed like this with your puff sleeves. I guess we shouldn't show every building. There's quite a few scattered around this main cluster in town. That's why I want to come back when I really have some time. Maybe stay in the campground or something and really get to explore when I have that film permit. Uh, look at this one. It actually has a green gable. It's all so awesome looking. These wooden siding, the wood shake roof. Kind of handy because they do have a little walking tour map. They warned us about bears and rattlesnakes being in the area today. So far it's mostly wasps and a lot of bumblebees. Dude, this is so cool. Someday I'd like to own a little miner's cabin in the woods. Look at you. You're so beautiful, Allie. Apparently a lot of French gold rush people came here. Don't forget that people came to the gold rush from all over the world, including France. So maybe that makes Allie like this place a little bit more. Although she'd like it anyway. Look how pretty it is out here. This is supposed to just be our day for driving home like a bullet. But Allie visited some family earlier in Grass Valley and some family friends. And then I've wanted to come up here for years. So I thought I'd avail myself of the opportunity and do at least just a little bit of snooping. Dang man, 10 out of 10. This rules. Up oh, here's the Skidmore Saloon I was talking about. Nothing but a foundation and a hole for the basement. Probably a lot of other foundations and fragments around here. Sadly though, I've got to leave that exploration for another day. There are a couple more things we've got to take some sick pics of at least before we leave. Look at that, there's little remnants of Bloomfield everywhere. All of this here would have been town and all around would have been thousands and thousands of dudes spraying out the hillsides, getting at the rich stuff. So many men, they had churches, they had schools, they had saloons and hotels. Even the old cemetery. The main feature though of Malakoff Diggins are the various diggins themselves. Look at this. Whoa. Humbug Creek runs down there which later runs into the Yuba River. They channeled all that water into those nozzles and literally blasted this whole mountain away. Running all this dirt into sluice boxes kind of like you'd pan for gold just on an epically huge scale. Look at the destruction still see it to this very day. That's just a little baby sample. There are trails going through the major part of the diggings and all these different mines. It's about a thousand billion degrees up here in the mountains right now. And like I said, we gotta get home so I don't have enough time. That's why I'm like, oh, I gotta come back. I gotta do the whole experience. All right, let's see if we can get at least a peek at the big diggings. All right, we're getting close now. It's just a couple minutes outside of that town site. Oh yeah, check this out. Oh, they totally transformed the landscape up here. Oh my gosh. I can't even tell you. There's no way for me to capture on camera how huge the area is we're looking at, especially since new trees have grown up. Oh, if they heimbucked these mountains, good. Hope they got a lot of gold out of it. I wish they had left some behind for me. Oh, look, there's Allie. Scared of a bug, no doubt. A snake or a bug? Bug? Oh, the bumblebee. Just go past it. I'll go on the right hand side of you. Well, it's just a couple of bumbles. Just a couple of bumbles. <laughs> wow, across the road. It looks like they're still going with some stuff over here. I don't know if that's a flume over there or some other kind of mining equipment. Can you see that through the trees? But definitely uh, still something going on or was pretty recently. I wish I had some gold. Dude, back in the gold rush days where they were saying you could just pick it off the hills in California. Knowing me, I'm pretty sure I would have come out here and uh, tried to get rich too, just for the adventure of it. So even though the miners did these mountains dirty a little bit, I can't really judge them too harshly because back then, I mean, who knew it was going to have those kind of lasting consequences? You know how Yuba City, where you grew up, has flooded like a whole jack ton of times? It's because of this, literally, because of these diggings. All right, there may or may not be one other lookout over here from the road, but uh, we're now on the bumpy Jillian Mile gravel road back to civilization. It's not too bad, a little washed out in some spots. I had no idea we were even gonna have to be going off road when we came up here, so I was like, are we lost? There's no cell phone service up here. Ooh, heck yeah. Pally just saw a huge spider crawl down there. That's why her face was looking like that. But look out the window. Look at the size of those diggings. I would show you the, the spider. The size of it was pretty sizable too. I think he's coming home with us now though. Sorry. This is a whole separate valley from the one we were just standing in. Look at that. It looks like Bryce Canyon or something out there. 
Too bad drones aren't allowed. There's a whole big old long loop trail through here. I am definitely coming back to do. I wonder if there were any Greek miners up here, because Malakoff diggins. I don't know where the Malakoff comes from. I'll have to do a little reading, but sounds a lot like a bad word in Greek. All right, our pet spider's secure in the engine. I think he'll be coming home with us, Allie. Don't worry about it, okay? For now, though, time to get it in gear and head back to town. Ooh, and head back to that rickety shake shake bridge. All right, we're almost back down to the giant old school ugh, wooden bridge. Some of you may know I am not a fan of any bridge, especially a scary sketchy wooden old bridge but i did make it across driving and this time i'm gonna hop out and show you guys the bridge while Allie drives across time to face my fears oh my gosh look at it this would scare me any time of day any day of the week any week of the year just to walk across much less take a heavy car across weight limit four tons oh i hope the quarantine doesn't betray me too much i might almost weigh that much now i like how it says too dangerous to swim but there's tons of people down there swimming okay here we go across on foot no problem at least it's nice and wide right here oh wow that is beautiful how old do you think this is it looks pretty old. Oh, I don't like that view. I don't like that view at all. Oh, it smells old too. Look at all those people down there in the old swimming hole. Oh, the car just passed me. Whew. All right, here comes Allie now, coming across the bridge. Oh, I can hear it making noise. Something about that just makes me ill. Whew, it made me sick to be on there when that one lady passed me. Those people look like they didn't care at all. They were like, ah, oh, whatever, car, us, no big deal. Whew, all right, I am buckled in. I am ready to go again. Whew, and now that Allie has put up with the wilderness, were you scared, by the way, crossing that? Oh, dude, I'm so scared of bridges. We get to travel back up the twisty but paved, at least, road back to civilization. So she can visit her favorite town of Nevada City. I can go say hi to my uncle, maybe, away from the car. And then we'll have to head home to Southern California. All right, guys, hang on there. Watch out. Don't get too car sick. I know the road's kind of twisty. Make sure you keep yawning. Keep popping your ears. Ah, there we go. Nevada City. Allie's favorite. What'd you say? Get a furry steering wheel. A furry steering wheel? That's okay. Allie's gonna go to the candy store. We'll look at the bookstore. She has sort of a routine down here. Kind of weird. Her favorite store is closed down. The couple are elderly. I think the husband has COPD. He wants to do a little traveling. It's gonna end up like all the other cool stores in Nevada City and become a hippie shop. You can buy a lot of beads and crystals up here. This town's definitely been taken over by people fleeing San Francisco. The funny part is then they bring San Francisco with them. Ain't it always the way? Well, at least I can appreciate the buildings and the gold rush history, even though I'm not quite um, crunchy enough. Hey, the bookstore down at the bottom of the hill is open. Of course, it's only open for pickup or, as it says, brief browse. So we're gonna mask up and get to briefing. Nothing like a good bookstore. Oh. I've been looking for this one. This building actually has an interesting history. It used to be the old assay office, and it's actually the assay office where they first determined all that rock from Virginia City had silver in it. So Nevada City, California had a hand in creating Virginia City, Nevada. Boy, that's confusing. But they got all kinds of mining artifacts in the parks around here. And somewhere in here, there's a plaque dedicated to the ladies of the evening. I can never find that one when I'm looking for it. Mark Twain once gave a lecture here in Nevada City. I believe he stayed in that hotel. He gave his lecture up at the theater. So whenever I come here, I always think, I wish I could have seen it back in Mark Twain's day. All right, Allie's headed into the candy store. Which means we're basically at our last stop. That's your favorite right there? Okay, I can't wait to get home and take a long break from wearing a mask. Well, it's been real. And it's been fun. But was it all real fun? Either way, we've done our duty. Now it's time to go home and sleep well.
the makers of stuff. Get your very own Random Land Sidekick. What you gonna do without your sidekick? Random Land Sidekick. Gotta give you one of them sidekicks. Now you can have your very own Justin Scar as your sidekick for your own adventure. Or maybe just right. pick up Julio to confuse and mystify your enemies. Watch out for Allie. She's on to your shenanigans, Julio. Random Land Not sold in stores, void where prohibited.